The inverse function theorem in several variables is one of the most used results from real analysis to branches like differential geometry. In this course, we are focusing on one variables. So let me just state and prove the theorem in the one variable case. First, let's begin with a somewhat simplistic statement, which we will in a moment generalize to the more general version. Theorem, let f from closed interval a b to r be a continuous function. Continuous function, of course, a is less than b. Assume that f is differentiable, differentiable in open interval a b and further, further that f prime of x is strictly greater than 0 for all x in a b. Okay. Then f is invertible f is invertible and its range range is f of a f of b and the inverse function the inverse function g from closed interval f of a f of b to a b is an increasing differentiable function differentiable function strictly increasing I might add strictly increasing differentiable function with the derivative at a particular point y is equal to 1 by f prime of x or rather 1 by f prime of g of y. Okay, So let me read out this statement. You have a continuous function from closed interval a b to r. We are assuming that f is differentiable in the open interval a b and further that the derivative is greater than 0 at all points. Now we already know that under these hypothesis the function f will be strictly increasing. Therefore, we have already shown that f is invertible in an earlier module and not only have we shown that uh, f is invertible, we have shown that the inverse is a continuous function. So this inverse being a strictly increasing function is rather obvious. So we have this inverse from g, inverse g from f of a f of b to a b. The key assertion is that this inverse is differentiable and you have a formula for the derivative of the inverse. Now the statement is long but the proof is easy. The proof is easy. Proof. We already know. We already know. Please check the notes for precise references to the earlier results. We already know from earlier results, earlier results that, that f is invertible f is invertible and its inverse inverse g is continuous. This much we already know. Well, what we do is the following. Let f of a be just alpha and f of b be beta. We have this function g from close interval alpha beta to closed interval a b okay the fact that this is strictly increasing is obvious the fact that this is strictly increasing is obvious okay now we have to show that g is differentiable on so let me be ultra precise differentiable function on on open f of a f of b okay now we have to show that g is differentiable. So what you do is fix, fix alpha less than y naught less than beta. We have to show differentiability at this point. Okay. 
now because because this function is going to this function f is actually a bijective function it's certainly injective and surjective we know that we know that we can find we can find x not in open a b such that f of x not is equal to f of x not is equal to y not okay in fact this point is unique because the function f will be strictly increasing because the derivative is greater than 0 everywhere again check precise references in the notes okay so we have f of x not equal to y not let y in alpha a b be near near y not okay again we can find we can find x in a b with f of x is equal to y okay now all this is a setup to take the newton quotient g of y minus g of y naught by y minus y naught and by the way things have been set up this is nothing but x minus x naught by f of x minus f of x naught we have set things up so that this happens and this is nothing but 1 by f of x minus f of x naught divided by x minus x naught okay of course this is valid if x is not equal to x naught all this is valid if x is not equal to x naught okay but but g is continuous which was the, how we began the proof g is continuous so if y approaches y naught then then this point uh, x must approach must approach approach x naught simply because x is just g of y and of course g of x naught uh, g of y naught is x naught okay so limit y approaching y naught of what we are interested in the Newton quotient g of y minus g of y naught by y minus y naught this is same as limit limit y approaching y naught of 1 by f of x minus f of x naught by x minus x naught from the remark I just made that as y goes to y naught x goes to x naught so this quantity inside just approaches 1 by f prime of f prime of x naught which is just 1 by f prime of g of y naught as required as required okay so the proof is fairly straightforward you just compute the newton coefficient the only key part is that there is a function g that is inverse that just follows from the fact that f is strictly increasing which follows from the fact that the derivative is greater than zero so this is typical of the proofs in mathematics what we have done is over the uh, course we have proved several results essentially we are just combining all of them and this proof is immediate once you combine all of them okay so immediate remark immediate remark similar result similar result is true is true if f prime of x is strictly less than 0 for all x in a b so that means f will be a strictly decreasing function then i had left an exercise for you earlier to show that in this case f is actually the inverse of f actually exists and the inverse of f is going to be uh, continuous so on and so forth it's exactly the same proof will go through okay now I'm going to state the general inverse function theorem the general inverse function theorem and I'm not going to prove it because it should be rather obvious from the theorem that we have already shown this is the inverse function theorem function theorem let f from open interval a b to r be a c1 function recall this means that the derivative of f exists and the derivative is in addition continuous suppose suppose for some 
x naught in a b sum x naught in a b f prime of x naught is not zero f prime of x naught is not zero then we can find we can find open sets open sets open sets u subset of a b such that x naught is in u and v subset of r such that f of x naught is in v satisfying satisfying number 1 f is bijective or rather f restricted to u is bijective and its image its image is v okay 2 2 the inverse the inverse of f restricted to u is also a c1 function okay now i'm not going to prove this intentionally the crux of this proof is already contained in the previous theorem i want you to sit down and think about this and prove this theorem it will give you a sense of satisfaction simply because this theorem in its several variable incarnation is one of the most used results in differential geometry so this concludes this module this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on the inverse function theorem